Welcome to the TTT News Special. I'm DK Rossa. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are also being joined by the co-founders of NCHOCHO, a non-governmental organization dedicated to changing the social landscape through youth-oriented initiatives in Trinidad and Tobago. And the main drivers behind this initiative are Joan Haru Blackman and her husband, Michael. So we say thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing, Blackmans? Oh, we are fine and we are happy to, to have you host us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you to you, the station. And, uh, of course, we welcome the opportunity to speak to the wider national and international audiences. And speaking about that international and national audience, give me a little idea, please, Ms. Joanne, about the overview or the history of NTOTO. All right. Well, what you will find happening here is that both Michael and I would, you know, from in between the whole conversation, we tend to share the information that is going on there. We sort of bounce and feed off of each other. So is that okay with you? Totally get it. All right. So we started way back in about 2007, being the parents of five children, four boys and one girl. And um, the fourth boy of the five children was about to write the SEA then, uh, SCA common entrance, well, SCA examination. And um, we thought, look, how can we say thanks to Sacred Heart Boys, which is where the, all the boys attended, and Michael as well would have attended the school way, way back <laughs> in his day. And um, coming out of that, we looked at um, the different, you know, all that is happening. People tend to take the children for uh, treats, things that they can eat. And we recognize that when that is done, it's done. There is nothing that they can look back on. There's nothing tangible in that exercise. It may be stimulating psychologically, but in terms of physically, there would be no evidence to show them that, listen, this is what happened and this is how it happened. Okay, so we wanted to create a, a lasting impression uh, upon the children's minds and hearts. And uh, Joanne, you know, quickly thought of well, what could we do that would really create a lasting impression? And we decided to give the children stationary kits, yes, kits that they could use to write their exams, the tools to write their exams, you know? But what we didn't factor in here was the fact that um, we weren't dealing with one child, which is our son and we were talking about, and we think it was just one class. Uh, we came to find out that at the school there, and this, I think it still exists, two classes of children, you're talking about a total of about 70 children, and it was a little outside of our pockets then to do all 70, but we didn't feel we wanted to give some and not all. So we reached out to some of our partners because of our jobs, we would have been at, at you know, at a level of management where we could have um, spoken with persons at that level. And these would have been, you know, friends, friends of ours, personal right. friends, yes. uh, you know, some businessmen, some corporate people. Uh, and they would have supported the effort, uh, right. maybe more so through Joanne's, a lot of Joanne's contacts. Right. Uh, and at the end of it all, I think we would have been able, and you know, also appealing to our friends and, and stuff who understood the course. And at the end of it all, we would have reached about, Right, we reached what, about 500 children, 35 schools within the Port Espina and Environment Education District. We did go outside of the district somewhat because we reached as far as Mount Lambert in the east. Yeah, we reached as far as uh, Maraval as in well. the north, mm -hmm. Saiba. And in the west, we went as far as Karana's boys at Point Command. We went further, we went further north, we reached Parliament, Parliament RC, yes, yes. So at the end of the day, you know, the, the response that we got was enough that we, we would have satisfied, I think, about and how many schools? About 35 schools? Yes, or 35 schools mm -hmm. initially. Uh, coming out of that, we had we had a, a photo photo shoot of the event at, at, at Sagan Art Boys. And uh, where the, the schools would have sent a representative teacher and a child mm -hmm. uh, to receive the packages. And at that photo shoot, the teachers would have approached Joanne and asked her, what could be done based how on can the fact we have, how can we have that the children have six weeks in which to, you know, where they wait for the results? What could be done within that time? What could Entoto help them 
fund. And of course, at that point in time, it was a short window. So within two weeks, Michael and I, we put our heads together and we came up with bridging the cap, a sound beginning to another level of learning, and we call it a post SCA program. And basically bridging the gap, but attempted to give the children the tools to navigate secondary school life and life beyond. Simply because uh, at, at primary school, the children basically are in the hands of one teacher who becomes like a foster parent. And at secondary school, the children find themselves having to fend for themselves. And, uh, you know, we knew that it could be a very traumatic experience. We had seen how children could uh, be led astray and, and, and stuff like that. So we thought of giving them the tools to be able to navigate their way through that maze and through the challenges of secondary school. Because, of course, as Michael said, you know, you go into secondary school, and as you, of course, would know too, you spend, what, about 30 to 40 minutes with one teacher, and you have to move on to another, and you have, what, 10, 8, eight or 10 subjects. So you have 8 or 10 different persons with whom you interact, and, of course, you're in a sea of, of uh, surrounded by strangers, basically. So um, we thought we would introduce them to things like, uh, uh, we did we did protocol and etiquette so we, we basically put our heads together and based on our experiences of, the, of our past experiences uh i would have worked within the education system and seen children come in one way and leave twisted out of shape sometimes just by the peer pressure and the various uh challenges that came their way and not having the, the tools with which to, to, to mitigate and so on and uh joanne would have had an experience where she would have observed that uh, well, having, having been the uh, chaperone for uh, a manager, rather, for an under-17 national basketball team to one of the islands, we would have had to take young people, of course, and we, I witnessed there, sadly, the fact that, and not only there, I should say, from looking at, you know, what happens on the news as well, you would see, and, and, and this is an honest statement, where... Um, the person who may be the, the captain of a team or, or whatever may be called upon to say a few words and, and the person is not too comfortable doing that. So we thought we would prepare them and train them in the way that they should speak, you know, to become articulate and confident in themselves. And also uh, if they would have to dine in public or a public in a public forum, public function, uh, they would know the proper protocol and etiquette to adopt. So we came up with a program that was called Bridging the Gap. And that program would have had as a as the course outline, it would have dealt with um, stuff like teenage sexuality, peer pressure, group dynamics, spirituality, uh, spirituality money management, money management. Mm -hmm. counseling, with Naki Chatu, Dr. Chatu. You would have had protocol and etiquette, mm -hmm. and actually they were after they were they were they were schooled in protocol and etiquette by the stewards, the chief stewards at the president's house from the, uh, the, the, the defense force. We have worked closely with the defense yes. force through the years. Maybe we should say that uh, most of our projects would have, um, we would have partnered with agencies of the Ministry of National Security. And just before you, and just before you dive into the individuals that you will be partnering with, thank you. But I want to, I want to state two things. One. The way that you all are able to bounce ideas off each other <laughs> is literally couple goals. So I'm, I'm fing fingers crossed and working towards being at that level of understanding. And two, <laughs> I just want to state categorically that the images that we are showing would be pre-pandemic. So you're seeing those numbers and you're seeing maskless people. There's a reason for that. <laughs> That's right. COVID yes. never keep them times. So we just so we just saying that and just putting that on the record because sometimes uh, something that is so good and seems to be doing so much work, uh, it it is easy to say okay, but what about this? They're doing this good, but what about that? So we're just making sure that that is there on the record. People have that understanding. But in terms of going forward with the conversation, though, uh, you all spoke about a lot of people that you've been working with, and I actually want to get more names from you just now. But let's go to the level of Patreon, please, because one of the tools one of the tools in your toolbox, it seems, is contacts. So when we return from this break, we will speak about the patron that you're dealing with in addition to so many other things. We're speaking with Antocho. Stay with us. We'll return with more.
Welcome back. We are speaking with Joanne Haru Blackman and Michael Blackman, co-founders of NCHOCHO, an NGO that is doing the most. Uh, but we, I ask that you all give me an idea of the patron and how that relationship works. So I'm not calling any names. I've learned my lesson. So let me just ask about the patron, please. Do you want us to call the name right now? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm not, I'm not calling names for you all to answer because you all answer in conjunction. But please, feel free to call names. All right. All right, well, we have as our patron, and we have had her for the last couple of years, I would say dating back to uh, about 2017 or so, uh, Mrs. Sharon Clark Rowley. And um, <laughs> words kind of describe that, that lady. I think, we, I think the nation knows um, who she is what she represents and what she stands for. And uh, as she would have said in an interview recently, she's very careful with whom she aligns herself and her name. And so therefore we are very, very grateful indeed and humbled by the fact that she immediately accepted our invitation to come on board and identify with us. Yes, and this, this would have been after we had invited her to grace one of our interventions and having seen what we were about and having investigated a little more and done the background checks, I would think, and having spoken with us, uh, eventually, a little later, when we asked her to become our patron, uh, because we have several interventions, she willingly agreed. And um, I think she has, been, she has been very actively involved in all of our interventions because I think she has a passion. She shares a similar passion uh, that I've told us for the, for the development of our youth resource, yes. you know, without a doubt, you yes. know. And of course, and, you know, I just want to um, jokingly say here that, you know, Michael spoke about that. Um, she would have done her investigation, understandably so, understanding her profession, of course. <laughs> uh, we, so we have, we have a patron, and um, we also have uh, several people who have, who have helped us in the past, you know. Um, Immediately coming to mind is Mr. Devi Budu Singh of Renta. Renta, um, um, what does it stand by for? I mean, words cannot describe the, I, I don't know, the magnitude or the magnanimity of this man in terms of what he has contributed to this organization. And you would have done that, Vicky, starting from a time when we did not even know him. We only got to meet him last year. The first time we actually laid eyes on the man in person yes. and met him was 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 last year during the the, the whole COVID situation. And, you and know, yet still, you know, he presented he him was, with a token of appreciation. Yes, and he was you know giving to us way before that. And and let me say this: we have had what we had called a fitness fair uh, at the 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 Mandela Park, and for that to be a success, we would have needed a stage because we had a Zumba burnout, the very inaugural event was on a Mother's Day, and we had an, a, a Zumba burnout with different schools participating. At that point, we needed a stage and we needed a sound system. We called on the gentleman, and he sent us more than we expected. We got a sound system, we got a stage, we got technicians, we got a whole van with, with all the, 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 the power supplies and so on, you know. I mean, this was a top-notch. For the entire day. Yeah, and this was top of the line. I mean, we could never find the money to, to purchase something like that or to, to, to fund that or to rent it. So he didn't spare any, you know, spare no, 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 cost, <laughs> no cost, no no corners were cut in, in, in helping us. And he has done that religiously. And you the way know, that you're saying, and the way that you're saying this, it's it feels as though it started out being something very five loaves and two fish. Uh, yes. And, <laughs> yes. And, yes. Yes. And you have yes. an idea of what you want to do, even though you're cognizant of the resources that you have. So you reach out, hoping that people get that vision, get the idea, That's literally right. look, literally look at the seed and see the fruit. And it seems mm -hmm. as though this is what is happening at this point in time. But you spoke about just seeing the person from uh, Renter Amp just last year while COVID was, was happening. Who are some of those other people? Because I, I, I would have seen you put out some information saying thank you to some of the individuals who would have right. engaged with you and, and partnered with you. So who are some of those and what is the role that they would have performed in that, in that capacity? We could go 
as far back as uh, when we had hosted the first camp, sleepover camp, and we would want to recognize Major General Edmund Dillon, who was the Chief of Defense Staff at the time. And of course, um, being, um, uh, well, getting to know him through the then General uh, Alfonso, we would have had the opportunity to engage uh, Major General Dillon in conversations and he would have known about the organization. Michael, I don't know if you want to take up from there. Uh, so we would have formed an alliance, so to speak, you know, with um, the, the agencies of the Ministry of National Security, the, the, the police, the fire, the prisons, and ODPM. Uh, we would have had a sleepover camp, and during that camp, we would have forged these alliances. Apart from that, we also have to thank uh, ex-commissioner, retired commissioner, sorry, James Philbert, who also helped us with a huge camp we had called the basket camp. And we will go more into that. I know right now you want to find and out about we would, we would also it's like to, 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 to spotlight uh, the FCB because we have also had yes, a major partnership, partner. major partnership with, with FCB. They would have helped us uh, where we had an intervention where we rewarded children who would have done like well at the SEA and also with our youth ambassador program where we would have traveled abroad they would have been one of the people who stood with us and we also want to recognize we have spoken about some of i know you want to focus on the um we're talking about caribbean airlines as another major sponsor of an, uh, a project that we did um but you know what is interesting again is that having started these projects way back in 2009 we would have had to encounter new sitting heads. And in each case, it was a seamless transition. That is critical to know, you know, so that there was never any hiccups to say with the passing of the baton within the agencies and in terms of the relationship uh, with the, uh, with our organization. So for example, the current Chief of Defense Staff, Rear Admiral Darrell, right? Um, Daniel is now very much involved once we should have for the need for the organization to be part of whatever we're doing. Um, and, and it goes for all the other agencies. And with regard to into the new sitting heads or people coming into a position where you used to deal with someone else, I believe one of those is Her Excellency, uh, Paula May Weeks. Uh, in the minute and a few seconds we have left. I want you to speak to that a little bit because she also seems to be someone who's very uh, cautious about those she engages with. And how do people contact you and try to give up their time, talent, and treasure in this final minute? Well, let, let, let us say that we invited Her Excellency to address the children at what we call a student success seminar. She gracefully accepted and she did address the children. Uh, I think that again may have been because of her looking at our track record her own research. and mm -hmm. seeing that we are definitely devoted to the youth development of the, of the country. Um, we normally reach out to people who we think can make a difference, DK, um, and we ask them, we, we let them know what we are about, we send them little snippets of things we have done, and therefore we ask them to assess and, and evaluate what we have done and decide whether they want to invest and be a shareholder in what we are trying to achieve. And by the same token, we also do our investigations because we want to ensure, because anybody could come to you and say, I want to be part of what you're doing. But we need to know that you share the vision, as Michael said, and that you are on the same page with us, you know, that there are no dark or hidden corners. And I like the fact that you all speak about being on the same page because time is done, but at the same time, we can also have people who want to be a part of the movement to look for the NTOTO page on Facebook. So that's E-N space T-O-T-O -T -O on Facebook, and you get more information about what you're doing. Thank you so much, Ms. Joanne. Thank you so much, Mr. Michael, for putting in that wood and having the sparking this five loaves and two fish moment. And on behalf of the entire news team, we want to thank you for being a part of the TTT News Special. Sure.